This is subscription drop 5 of Thinking Particles. In this feature video, we will talk about shape noise, a new addition to Thinking Particles 5. Let's have a look at the scene. We have this cube and we use volume breaker on this cube. And uh, as we can see here, all the uh, uh, cut edges are flat, so it looks more like a crystal. And that's usually uh, the, the normal effect you get from a volume breaker uh, object. What you usually want to do is rough up a little bit these cut edges so that they look more natural. And this is exactly what shape noise is doing. Let's bring up uh, the setup of the scene. And as we see here, we start with bringing in the box object. We feed that into volume breaker. And then in volume breaker, we just do the breaking and some settings. And here's the new operator for subscription drop five, the shape noise operator. What we did is the roughness control of a volume breaker is no longer available. We made it its own operator and that gives you huge power now in your visual effect setups. Shape noise comes with the options you already might know as well as new options and enhanced options. Tessellation, for example. When we tessellate the surfaces, we have enhanced the algorithm so that it creates a more even uh, distribution of triangles. As we can see right here, we get a nice even distribution of the triangles. To rough up the edges, we want to increase the tessellation a little bit. And you can see here, it's nice even uh, distribution of our triangles. So that helps much more now in creating a rough surface. We can now also tessellate independently the remaining mesh. So you can assign either the same tessellation amount or less tessellation, or like we want to have it in this example right now, we can have no tessellation at all for the remainder mesh. So this saves us some triangles. Now we have all the tessellation there and the next thing we want to see or have is our noise. We want to add some noise here. And we used for the noise a cellular map, as we will see in a second. And uh, right now we can identify we might want to have a little bit higher tessellation, just one step more of a tessellation to get more details of our uh, 3D texture map to distort the surface of our cuts. So now that looks much, much better, much more detail in our tessellation and we have really fine detail of our texture map. Let me just bring up uh, next the texture map so that we can see what is causing this uh, surface distortion. And uh, as you might have guessed already, it's a standard cellular uh, texture map and we use the cellular texture map to create the rough surface here. And with the cellular texture map, we can create all kinds, we can adjust the size and uh, different kinds and add fractals and so on. Another important thing is that we keep our edges clean. Sometimes you want to have the edges clean and we integrate it here and enhance the fall off feature. So you can see in that we have now a fall off of 0.06 meters and uh, you can adjust in exact world coordinates the amount of fall off towards the edge. Let's just change it to a much lower value and you will see we are now getting closer to the edge and the edge start already start a little bit of distortion. So um, we can make a bigger one point, uh, 0 0.1 meters and now we have a nice distance to our edge. The good thing here is the edges stay straight. They will not be distorted or show any artifacts. And that's good when you want to have an animation where something explodes and needs to be full and close. And now we see our full cube. This is the shape noise operator we added to subscription drop five. And the great thing is it's a external or separate thing. It's its own operator, so you can assign it to any thinking particles uh, particle group. Here we brought in three spheres 
and uh, we use our shape noise to distort or displace the spheres. So what we did is we used the object to particle and then we just apply the shape noise. And the great thing is it's an own operator now, so you can use it on any kind of particle shapes. Here in this example, I want to uh, show you the feature we have to decide how the noise is applied. So right now we have it relative to the bounding box. So the displacement is scaled to the size of the object, which is usually what you want when you have different or varying sizes of objects. The other option is absolute world. You can type in that you want a 0.5 meter displacement and it will be 0.5 meters, regardless of how big your original object is. So the displacement you see here is on all spheres the same height, it's 0.5 meters. So it's no longer dependent on the bounding box. This is really a nice and very powerful feature, especially when you work with uh, particle systems with varying sizes. This just makes sure that all displacement looks the same. Now another scene. As I said, you have we have shape co noise as a separate operator, and you can apply it to any kind of particles. We use here this particle system, just some spheres. Let's have a look. It's a really pretty simple setup, a position board, nothing fancy. We assign the standard shape, and now let me activate the shape noise. And let's have a look how the result looks like. So now every sphere is now distorted. And when you watch closely, you can see that every sphere has a different um, displacement or different uh, modification. And this is achieved by the shape noise uh, feature where we have a random shift. The random shift value make sure that every sphere or every particle in that case uh, gets a different noise so that they don't look all the same. When we have no shift, all particles would look the same. And if we add the random shift, everything will look different. And that's great to get these organic, natural looking uh, effects in your scenes. Because in nature, nothing is really identical to each other. And this is a very powerful feature as well. So this is Shape Noise, our new operator in Thinking Particle Subscription Drop 5. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our other videos as well.